This is a 10-gallon tank that contains around a dozen juvenile bristlenose plecos. One day, while doing a water change, I noticed that the plecos were attracted to the current created by the new water that was being put into the tank. So this got me thinking, could these bristlenose plecos be convinced to climb up the glass and out of the water if a steady stream of water was running down the glass? Obviously, the mouth of a bristlenose is very effective for clinging to the glass while it's submerged, but I wondered how effective would their suction be if they were above the water line? Could a bristlenose pleco use its mouth to climb out of the water and up the glass? And this question led me to design a little experiment to test their climbing skills. I removed the driftwood and lowered the water level in the tank. Then, I installed a small submersible pump with a short length of hose that was positioned so that I would have a steady stream of water running down the glass at the front of the pleco tank. The bristlenose were attracted by the flowing water and soon began their attempts to follow the stream of water up onto the glass. The bristlenose uses its tail fin to propel itself above the water line and then attaches to the wet glass using its mouth. However, once partially above the water line, the bristlenose is only able to continue moving upward if its tail fin is below the water, and none of them were able to make it completely out of the water. And the only reason why they keep getting pushed back by the current is that the smooth surface of the glass gives them nothing to hold on to, so any progress that they make is slowly erased by the steady stream of water flowing down the glass. However, as you're about to see, when we added a bit of traction, they climb right up the vertical pane of glass with little trouble at all. Now, it's important to note that while these catfish are primarily a bottom-dwelling species, many types of placostomous catfish, like the bristlenose, are instinctively attracted to moving water. And most of them will rise to the surface where there's a current in an attempt to expand into new areas. This behavior is especially common in juvenile fish, which have a natural tendency to disperse from the place where they were born and find a new territory to call their own. And this natural tendency to look for greener pastures is how many species expand their range as they seek new opportunities for feeding and reproduction. Unfortunately, this perfectly natural behavior can sometimes cause these fish to climb into hang-on-the-back filters, sponge filter outputs, or even into the uncovered output of a canister filter. And it's often said that when a catfish spends a lot of time at the surface or climbs out of an aquarium, it's often due to poor water quality, a lack of oxygen, or to escape an aggressive tank mate. While this might be true in many instances, it's also important to remember that sucker mouth catfish like plecos are naturally drawn to moving water and their habit of climbing may be unrelated to poor water quality. Now, let's see what happens when we give these bristlenose catfish a bit of traction to help them climb. In this scenario, I've positioned the hose so that the water from the pump runs down the glass in the corner of the tank. And, as you can see, these amazing fish now have very little trouble climbing up to the top. The soft silicone in the corners of the aquarium offers the plecos something to hold on to, and this added bit of attraction allows the bristlenose pleco to use the spines located on the leading edges of both its pectoral and ventral fins to grab onto the silicone so that it's not pushed back down the glass by the force of the rushing water. It's still a difficult climb against the current, but they're now able to climb above the waterline. However, that's not the end of the story because there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. So let's take a closer look at exactly how these fish are able to climb up and out of the water. 
One of the things to notice is that the shape of the pleco's head and lips can change depending on how the water is hitting the leading part of the fish. The shape of the head and the lips are very important when it comes to how well the pleco is able to maintain its position in a strong current. Nonetheless, what's even more important is how the fish is able to move itself forward against the current because there's only a thin film of water running down the glass, so the tail fin is not a very effective means of propulsion. Yes, the pleco is moving the tail fin as it climbs up the glass, and I'm sure that that does help it a little bit. Furthermore, having a suction cup for a mouth is also very important as well. However, these two things alone do not allow them to climb up the glass. If you recall in the earlier part of the video where the water was running down the center of the glass, the plecos were unable to climb above the waterline because the tail fin was the sole means of propulsion and it needed to be completely immersed in order to be effective. Then when I switched the position of the hose to the corner of the tank where there was a bit more traction, the plecos were suddenly able to climb up the glass with very little trouble at all. Pay close attention to this part of the fish and be sure to notice how this area moves back and forth each time the fish climbs. This part of the fish contains what's known as the pelvic girdle and it's attached to the pelvic fins, which are also sometimes referred to as the ventral fins. The ventral fins sit lower on the body than the pectoral fins and are more effective for helping the pleco maintain its grip on the substrate in moving water. These two fins are also held closer to the body and move back and forth in a ratcheting type motion that helps the pleco inch along the substrate. Now let's watch that again in slow motion so that it's easier to see how this area moves. In order for this back and forth motion of the ventral fins to be effective, the spines on the leading edges of the fins need to have something to grab onto. And this is why the pleco is able to climb the glass in the corner of the tank where there's a soft layer of silicone, but it can't climb in the center of the glass where it's completely hard and smooth. In a few minutes, we'll be looking at some juvenile bristlenose plecos climbing straight up the vertical rock face of a small waterfall. But first, let's look at an adult bristlenose using its ventral fins to move around on a sandy substrate. Be sure to notice how the bristlenose moves his ventral fins backwards and forwards as he moves across the sand, and this is the very same motion that will allow the bristlenose to climb up a waterfall. This back and forth motion of the ventral fins allows the pleco to inch along the bottom of a fast moving stream without having to lift its body off of the substrate and then risk being swept away by the current. In this close-up view of the ventral fin, as seen from the bottom, you can see the spines on the leading edge of the fin, as well as the rich supply of blood that's being pumped to the muscles that are used to power the fins. Now, let's see all of this in action as we watch the bristlenose plecos climb a small waterfall. The bristlenose plecos that you'll see climbing up this little waterfall are between an inch to an inch and a half in length, and as you can see, they have no trouble climbing right up the vertical slope of this wet rock. 
The pump that I'm using to create this little waterfall moves about 66 gallons of water per hour, and it's small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. I've provided a link to the same pump in the description section beneath the video. In the wild, wet rocks like this can provide a rich source of algae and biofilms that are unavailable to fish that are not able to climb above the waterline. This incredible ability to climb up waterfalls also allows the plecos to re-establish new populations in areas where they may have been previously wiped out due to extreme droughts or torrential floods that may have swept the adults downstream. This ability to climb also enables the bristlenose plecos to leave pools of water where there may be lots of predators and find new upstream habitats where there may be lower levels of predation. This ability to disperse from the area where they were born also reduces competition between the parents and their young, and it also decreases the likelihood of inbreeding by allowing for the transfer of genes from one population to another. Upstream migration can also increase access to valuable breeding sites that may otherwise be out of reach. These upstream habitats may also provide more feeding opportunities for juvenile fish while allowing the species to expand its range into areas where it may not have previously lived. As you can see, leaving the water to climb a waterfall has several benefits, but it's not without its risks. One of the greatest challenges they face when leaving the water is that they run the risk of drying out. However, rather than having scales like other fish, the pleco is covered in hard, bony plates that helps it to retain moisture for long periods of time. These bony plates cover most of the fish, and only the bottom part of the head and the abdomen are exposed. This hard covering on the upper part of its body enables the pleco to survive on dry land for several hours. And not only do these plates help keep the fish from drying out, but they also act like a suit of armor that helps protect the fish from predators, both in and out of the water. Another challenge encountered by leaving the water is that they still need to get oxygen in order to function, and one of the other adaptations that makes this possible is that they're able to breathe by gulping air from above the surface of the water. In extreme conditions, many fish are able to gulp air at the surface, but catfish are particularly good at it. In the United States, the state of Florida is currently having a real problem with common plecos that have been introduced into local waterways. The pleco population in Florida has exploded and they're causing a lot of trouble for native species in the area. And what's most troubling to me is that the plecos are now harassing one of Florida's most endangered animals, the manatee. The plecos are attaching to the skin of the manatees to feed off of the algae that grows on their backs, and I've seen footage of a dozen or more plecos attached to one of these gentle giants. Manatees are amazing creatures that have enough to worry about without having to fend off giant hordes of invasive common plecos. So I'd like to remind everyone, please do not release any pet fish into the wild. The damage that these non-native fish can cause is very serious, and it's often impossible to remove them once they've become established. Yes, plecos are amazing creatures as well, but they do not belong in the southern U.S., and as you've seen throughout this video, they have an amazing ability to crawl from one body of water to another. In fact, many scientists are now studying the pleco's ability to invade new bodies of water via terrestrial movements, and I do believe that this video shows for the very first time that the bristlenose pleco can climb waterfalls. Nonetheless, the ability to climb waterfalls is something that very few fish can accomplish, and all of the fish that climb up vertical surfaces like this tend to be juveniles, or at least very small fish that seldom grow to more than 3 or 4 inches in length as adults. 
There are several members of the Gobi family that can climb waterfalls, and one of the most famous examples of this is the Napoli rock climbing fish that lives in Hawaii. These amazing gobies can climb up waterfalls that are over 300 feet high. The female gobies lay their eggs in freshwater streams, then the eggs hatch and the larvae are washed downstream by the current into the ocean where they develop into juveniles. And after about six months in the ocean, the juveniles return to the freshwater streams, and as part of that journey, they climb massive waterfalls in order to get to the headwaters of the river where the cycle starts all over again. Another even more interesting fish that climbs is a cave-dwelling species that lives in northern Thailand. It's a type of hill stream loach commonly known as the cave angelfish. These rare, cave-dwelling loaches are completely blind and only grow to a length of just over an inch, and they're the only known fish that can actually walk just like a land-dwelling animal with four legs. The cave angelfish looks a lot like a salamander when it walks, and if you've never had a chance to see them move up a cave wall, I highly recommend that you look for a video of them climbing here on YouTube. They are amazing fish. Nonetheless, let's get back to our bristlenose plecos. As I said earlier, all of the fish that you've seen in this video are babies around an inch in length, and I didn't try to do this with full-grown adults. My guess is that adult plecos would be much less likely to climb up this little waterfall, but it's important to note that full-grown plecos can and will jump out of an uncovered aquarium. And if you do find a pleco that has jumped out onto the floor, don't give up all hope that it's dead. You'd be amazed at how tough these fish really are. Just return it to the water and it might just surprise you and come back to life. I know I was surprised by how fast these little fish were able to climb up this rock. I used a piece of cooked spinach and some tetra-tropical granules at the top of the waterfall to entice these plecos to climb, but as it turns out, the only incentive that they needed was the moving water. Once they reach the spinach at the top, they seemed to have no interest in eating, and their main focus was to just keep climbing. All of them climbed to the very top of the waterfall, and several of them tried to enter the hose where the water from the pump came out so I had to put a mesh covering over the end of the hose so that they didn't get stuck in it. They seem to have no fear of climbing beyond the running water and onto the dry rock, so I had to use a small wooden dowel to send them back to the bottom. Otherwise, all of them would have ended up on the floor. And that brings us to the end of this video, and I'm almost certain that you saw some things that you've never seen before, and learned some things that you didn't know. So, please help support my effort to continue bringing you these in-depth videos by contributing to this channel in any way that you can. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.